Hello and welcome to the Walking Talking Topic on Best Buy and Proportion. Question number three with me, Mr. Barton. Now this is a classic question. This brings in all your proportion skills. So get ready for this one. Results from an experiment have demonstrated there is a relationship between two variables f and g. It has been shown that f is inversely proportional to the square of g. Which one of these following statements best describes the results of the experiments? Right. Let's get our head around this. F is inversely proportional to the square of G. Now, I'm just going to actually write that down. F, so it's proportional to, but it's inversely, so it's going to be 1 over the square of G, otherwise known as G squared. So that's what that means. F is inversely proportional to the square of G. Now, inverse proportion means they've got an opposite relationship to each other. So if F goes up, G goes down. If G goes up, f goes down. So bearing that in mind, let's see which one of these statements fits. As g increases, f increases. No, can't be true. Forget it. It doesn't even matter what comes after that because it's inversely proportional. As g reduces, f also reduces. No, they're going in the same direction, so it can't be that. As g increases, f decreases. That's sounding a bit more like it. That's inverse. Variables f and g both change at the same rate. No, that's not true either. We've got a squared involved here, so that's not true. So statement c has got to be the right one. So I'm going to put c is correct. Now, I'm not going to get any marks for that because it's asked me to explain my answer. I'm going to write down inverse means as one variable increases the other decreases. There we go. Nice. All right. <clears throat> and then we get into the actual nuts and bolts. It was found that when f equals 4, g equals 5, write down an equation in terms of f and g expressing the relationship. Well, we've got our start up here. f proportional inverse 1 over g squared. Same deal. Write that as, a, as an equation with a k. f equals. Now, you're multiplying that function by k. So your k can go on the top, k over g squared. Just remember that. I'm going to put a box around it, because that's going to be my formula for later on. Now, let's fill in my information. When f is 4, g is 5. So k over 5 squared. OK. Let's multiply both sides by 5 squared to figure out what k is. So we have 4 times by 5 squared is going to be equal to k. Well, 5 squared is 25, and 4 lots of 25, I think that's going to give us k equals 100. Remember, that's 4 times 5 squared, d squared first. So my equation is f is equal to 100 over g squared, because my k was 100. Sorted. OK, use the equation to complete the following table. So when g is a half, what's f? So let's get it sorted. Uh, f is going to be equal to 100 divided by g squared. So 1 half squared. Now let's see if we can do this without a calculator just for a little bit of a challenge because we've been doing well on this question so far. Uh, what's 1 half squared? Well, that's 1 half times 1 half. Let's bang that in. 1 half times 1 half. Using my rules of fractions, multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms. That's a quarter. So we end up with 100 divided by a quarter. Now, when you divide something by a quarter, that's the same as times in it by 4. So that's the same as 100 times by 4, which is going to be 400. And notice here the inverse proportion. F has gone up from 4 to 400. G has gone down from 5 to a half. Inverse proportion. Now, what about this one here? <coughs> what is G when F is uh, 0.01? So we're going the other way around here. So f 0.01 equals 100 over g squared. Now we're going to have to do a little bit of arrangement here, but that's okay. Multiply both sides by g squared, so we get 0.01 g squared equals 100. Then I'm going to need to divide by 0.01 to get g squared equals 100 divided by 0.01. Now can we do this without our calculator? Dividing by 0 0.01. Well, I'll show you a little trick here. If you're not happy dividing by 0 0.01, you've got a nice fraction here. Multiply top and bottom by 10. So we get 1,000 divided by 0 
not quite simplified yet um, because we've still got a decimal there so now times top and bottom by 10 again so you get 10,000 divided by 1 which is otherwise known as 10,000 so we get g is e g squared sorry let's come down here for this bit g squared is equal to 10,000 so what's g going to be equal to so g is going to be equal to the square root 10,000. Now are the two numbers that you know, that have I missed, I missed a zero there, are the two numbers that you know that uh, multiply together to make 10,000? Well what about 100 times 100? I think that works. 100 times 100 is 10,000 so I think G is going to be equal to 100. And I'm just going to test that out because I'm just going to use my calculator because I'm not re-recording -re this video if I've made a howler there. So a good way to test this out is just to sub this back in to the equation. We're claiming that when g is 100, f comes out as 0 0.01. Let's have a look. So let's have 100. Sorry, where's my calculator there? You can't quite see this, can you? But uh, this is an anticlimax end to this video. So I can't flip and get the calculator lined up. 100 divided by um, g squared. So that's 100 squared. Press equals, press my FB button, and I'm hoping it's going to be 0 0.01. And yeah, things are looking good. So I think we got that one right.